and welcome back to setting up our home automation system. Um, in recent bit we described uh, what devices we'll use to transmit radio signals and to receive radio signals in or order to operate our radio oper operated power switches and so we have our uh, transmitter and our receiver we have already connected them to our Raspberry Pi and in this video we'll, I will show you one um, type of radio controlled power switchers that we can use um, to operate with those uh, first I will simply present you the, uh, these power switches how they work and then I will show you how we can actually read the code with receiver and then transmit it with transmitter so let's put our raspberry on the side and then let's have a look at our radio power switches. So there are many kinds of those on the market and they come in different shapes and different uh, technologies um, but um, and uh, what is uh, worth mentioning is that we will not be able to operate all of them so before you make a bigger purchase it would be best if you could try if you can actually operate them with uh, with a methodology that I will present to you. So these particular powered switches are sort of configurable. You can purchase them in, uh, usually you get one remote and one receiver and one power switch, but you can also buy them in pack, the packs that you can see there are four buttons here for four devices, A, B, C, and D. And so there are packs like you buy one remote and for for devices and you can actually configure them so let me take a look how it looks um, so in remote when you open it you get these uh, sliders and these sliders actually allow you to set up the frequency uh, for for your power switches so you can sort of make many of them many different configurations and uh, sort of use uh, many of those power switchers in your house depending on the setting in this remote controls but uh, this is just for this model there are also um, those power switches that do not have these settings that these settings is in them sort of fixed so in such cases you will not have to do anything so let's say that um, I will just set some example configuration here doesn't matter what I set here but I will just show you that uh, for this kind of power switches uh, these power switches also have this co uh, configuration where, where on the left you set the frequency which you also set on in, in your remote so if you remember in the remote I set all the sliders to the top and here I also have all the sliders to the top and then you set under which button it will work so here the second slider is on the top so this will be actually our B uh, it will be our B button but again in case of power switches that have no configuration you will not have to think about it at all that we just you know remote control will have some fixed signals and the transmitter will also have fixed signals which will be in sync with this remote control and you will have to not even think about it also worth mentioning is that this uh, our um, home automation system works with uh, radio controlled power switches which single signal is not encrypted so uh, what it means in reality is that the remote control will always send one signal and this uh, power switch will listen for this particular signal if um, signal because there are some power switches that use encrypted signal like uh, it is uh, for the remote control for our cars or for the garage doors you know they use encrypted signal which means that this signal is usually different every time or that there is uh, or that it, this signal is sent in um, series that the first series is about decryption and the second is the signal itself but our system will not work with this it will work only with 
power switches that have encrypted signal like this one for example okay so just to show you how these power switches work so it's kind of obvious uh, uh, I set it to be uh, working uh, under B so when I click B it uh, turns off and when I turn it off it turns off let's see just I can use this ancient uh, night light to see if it works it works okay so this is our power switch now what we will want to do is to connect it to our home automation system so at this point we have our Raspberry Pi we have our transmitter and receiver connected but we do not have uh, we do uh, we have our power switch which is in sync with the remote control of the power switch but if we want to send signal from Raspberry Pi then we don't really know what signal to send so first we have to read the signal from remote and we have to read two signals actually one for on one for off and then we, when we will know these signals we'll be able to send them using the transmitter and this will allow us to actually operate with the power switch from the Raspberry Pi. Uh, so let's check how to do this. Okay, there I had to rearrange my desk a little bit to show, um, to present how we'll send signals. So we have our stuff like it was, it is still working. And now we'll, we'll try to do we'll try to learn code from this remote and then send the code using our transmitter I will share my screen what I do at this point I assume that uh, you have downloaded RF sniffer library from github or because uh, this bit is a series about uh, um, implementing uh, home automation system that I share on the github as well which is also described in the description of this bit where the paths are to this um, solution. So at this point I assume that you've deployed the solution and you have home automation system or RF sniffer library somewhere on your uh, Raspberry Pi. So at this point what we should do is to get to the folder where we have this uh, uh, home automation system or uh, RF sniffer uh, library in my case uh, <coughs> if you deployed home automation system according to description file in, in, in github and you did not change the default path for the Apache server then your um, uh, solution the, the files that are responsible for reading and sending radio signals are contained in this directory which is bar www html home radio devices and at this point I also assume that you did proceed according to description file and in case you are working with RF sniffer library you would have also do the same so that means you would we would have to rebuild recompile the, these files by initiating make method on this folder which will generate you um, the files that will actually run to read and send signals so what we should do now we should get to this folder to run the script that will actually read our radio signal to do so I I open the terminal and I'll get to this uh, directory And now I will initiate the uh, RF sniffer, which is responsible for reading radio signals. So the RF sniffer is running. So what I do now is I simply place my transmitter somewhere near the receiver. Just uh, it has no antenna attached to it, so it has to be quite near and I simply push one of the buttons that I'm interested in I am interested in on button so I push it 
I push it firmly a couple of times and I can see that RF sniffer has actually read the signal and the signal is consistent because it, it is repeated consistently. So I assume that this is the correct signal. Now I will read the other button, the off button for this device. I repeat the procedure. Okay, I see that the signal is also consistently read. The value is the same. So what I do now is I can shut down the RF sniffer. It is not needed anymore. <coughs> and now I will initiate the code send and, uh, file, which will send the signal. And first I will try uh, the signal that was associated with button uh, on. If I look at the codes, it was 4433. So let's let's try it out. And it works. We just enabled the device using Raspberry Pi radio transmitter. Let's try to turn it off. So now I'll try with the off code that I read from the from this button. Uh, sorry, I made a mistake. Uh, it was 4436. Yeah. <laughs> okay, it also works. So I can repeat it and as many times as I want and it works. So I was able to read signal from the remote. Of course, from the remote it also works. And nothing changed here. I can turn it on with the remote and turn it off with uh, Raspberry Pi or I can uh, turn it on with Raspberry Pi and turn it off with the remote and that's it. So very simple procedure which uh, allows us to read the code from the remote. Now we know the code. Uh, this code that we read we could actually put into the home automation system and run it there from the user web interface and we will do so in the next vids probably but uh, in this vid I wanted to show you how to read the codes from the remote how to and how to send the code using Crossbar Pi uh, RF sniffer library on in this case also RF sniffer library but contained in home automation system that I shared on github and um, to check if it works by sending it with the transmitter to our device um, so that is it for the for this one in next one I will show you also other type of radio device that we can use and then uh, I think we'll wrap up um, the whole thing about the radio control devices and we'll continue to uh, how to set up the whole system thanks